Hi and welcome to Story Sequences. This is uh, particularly for anyone who ever struggles with engaging or connecting with their ideal client or maybe it's that you don't feel comfortable when it comes to inviting someone to work with you. Uh, so what we're going to be focusing on today is how do we wrap storytelling around that and what storytelling of course does is we lean in and we listen to stories. As a business owner and as a marketer we also have the opportunity to paint mental pictures in the minds of our ideal clients so that they not only can feel and experience what it might be like to work with you but of course also that ability to know what the transformation is going to be like, what's their life going to be like once you help them with the problem. So that's what we're going to be um, focusing on and we'll be doing story sequences over the next three Fridays and each, um, each session or each training will focus on a different area. So today's area is how do we insert ourselves into their story? How do we take our big vision, put that into a system and wrap that with storytelling? But first of all, of course, how do we get into their story? So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Of course, next week we will look at how do we give a great first impression and also make sure that we really add value to their lives. And the third week we'll be looking at my access framework which is writing email sequences that really nurture and um, encourage people to take action with you. So that's what you've got to look forward to but today as I said we're going to focus on, um, on that bigger picture and how do we insert themselves into the story. So the three parts of today are first of all what is their story? We need to know what their story is so that we can um, insert ourselves into their story as a solution to their problem. We're going to look at personality profiling which is something I've been using in the last 12 months and has been uh, really helpful as far as creating copy um, and creating stories. And then the third one is uh, we're going to look at what is the framework, what's the structure that we need to create uh, for a repeatable system. So if you have any questions as we go through today please just pop them in the comments or if you're watching the replay, um, feel free to leave a comment um, as well and happy to answer that. So first of all, of course, what's their story? We need to understand and empathise with their current situation. So the first part we need to look at is that they're over here on Pain Island. What does Pain Island look like for them? So we need to um, empathise with their situation and understand what's going on in their world right now that they're struggling with that you know that you have a solution for. So understand first of all what that is. Writing down, um, and particularly if you're watching the replay and you can press pause to write down what is it that they're most struggling with, what keeps them up at night, um, what's becoming a, a, um, an ongoing problem that they're starting to search for a solution for. The next part is to look at what does Pleasure Island look like over here. What is the transformation or the outcome that they most want? What does life look like after they've actually solved this problem? And we need to understand what that story looks like for them, what that life looks like, so we can paint a story around uh, what that transformation is. So again, if you're watching the replay, you can um, click pause. But thinking about um, what is an ideal, typical day for them? What are the key things that they care about that matter to them um, is really important and sometimes even doing a journal entry around this can really help bring up things that um, or words or phrases that can be really helpful. The other thing that I do that I find um, particularly helpful when it comes to looking at what does their pain island look like and what does their pleasure island look like is discovery calls or sales calls or sales conversations. Um, with potential clients. So during those sessions I'll take copious amounts of notes because it's their language that I then get to use in my copy, in my marketing, on um, sales pages, on opt-in pages, within pieces of content that I'm writing. I'm using their language um, because they can say it better than I can because it's coming straight from the heart. And generally during those conversations is when people are most open and they're most willing to share what's going on in their life. So that's the, um, that's the second piece. The third piece is the canoe. 
Now you are the canoe, you're the one who's taking them from Pain Island to Pleasure Island. So what is the solution or what is the, um, the, the thing that you're selling um, or that you're offering to your ideal client that's going to help them get from that first place to the second place? So understanding first of all, as I said, how to empathize with the person and insert yourself into the story as far as what they're struggling with right now. Sometimes if it's not a pain and you can't figure out what the pain is, flip it and look at what is the aspiration, what is the thing that they most uh, want and start there. Then look at what does life look like, that transformation, and then figure out what is it that I'm offering them that's going to help them with this course. So that becomes a framework of one of our stories. So that's the first piece. Now the second piece that I want you to think about, and this is more for those of you who have already um, started business or been in business for a little, little while, so you've been working with clients and you might have a better idea about this or you might have people that you can do a personality profile on, but it is, as uh, of course, uh, personality profiling. Now, it doesn't really matter which personality profiling tool you use. You may have something that you've used in the past that you love. Um, there are lots of different ones out there. Personally, I use the DISC personality profile. I've also used REACH, which one of my clients um, is a, um, specializes in the REACH profiling system, which is another great one. There's lots of different ones out there. I want to give you a quick overview of what the DISC profile um, means, the four different personality types, and how you might figure out how you, where your ideal client is and, and how I've used it in my own business. Now, the D in DISC stands for the person who is the driver, someone who um, is very direct in the way that they communicate, they drive um, actions and results, they're very results um, driven. So that is the D personality. I'm giving you a very high level here, so you can go and do some more research on this if you like. The I personality is someone who's quite, I always see them as quite um, bubbly personality. They walk into the party and everybody notices that, you know, um, notices that they've entered. They tend to be great with relationships and communication. But what they um, struggle with most is they have these great big visions and don't tend to um, implement those or struggle to actually finish projects if they do start them. The S personality, which is me, um, is generally someone who's very stable, likes things to be very calm, um, very dependable people. So um, try not to rock their boats too much. Um, they're looking for, um, you know, I guess they're very sincere and there's a lot of empathy there with the, that personality type. And then the C personality is very analytical. This person um, is great with attention to detail. Um, you know, they're, they're very good with, and again, I have a high S followed by a high C, so I have attention to detail, um, tends to think before they speak as well, um, you know, very, very um, considered in their approach to things. But of course, sometimes they get so bogged down in the detail that they can't see where they're going or that bigger vision. So they're the four different personality types. Now, this is how I've used it in my business. I know that um, I have a blend of different types of personality types that I work with. What I do know though is that the ones that I'm able to help the most, the ones that I'm able to help the most are those that um, tend to have this really big vision. They um, know what they want to do, but they just don't know how to do it. They struggle to get to the implementation side of things. They're really good at even starting stuff, but they never actually finish it and see it through. Um, they sometimes feel like there's so many ideas and so many good things that they can be doing that trying to ground themselves and get it actually done is their biggest challenge. And as you can probably tell, my ideal client is an I personality type. So I really use that when I'm looking at my copy that as an I personality type, what are they struggling with? What does their pain island look like? And what do they most, um, what's the transformation that they want? Well, they want to actually get this project out into the world. And what do they need to do that? They need someone who is great with attention to detail, someone who's steady and can calm them down. Um, particularly if they're going through big launches, they can get quite emotional. So they need someone who's stable. 
Um, they also need to know that there's an action plan there in place and that's being followed, that there's some accountability to make sure that they actually get it done. So that's where my solution and so one of my solutions as, as an example is the um, online marketing mastermind. So that is about providing accountability, it's about providing structure and um, making sure that they get things done in the right order and that they're following through. So think about what you're doing in your own business and the personality types that you tend to attract. As I said, it's not to say that I don't uh, get C personality types. I do attract that, those sorts of people and one of their big struggles is sometimes confidence to put things out there. They want to be busy doing the busy work but not actually launching things. So I can still help that person. It's just that my messaging tends to attract the I personality type. And then the last part of today is how do we bring this all into a structure? Now, the framework that I use um, starts with the audience or the awareness stage. How do we get people aware of what we're doing? And for me, it's really coming down to telling those stories we've talked about so far today through things like social media, through blogging. Um, blog, blogs, as you know, is a big part of what um, I do and attracting um, traffic through Google search and keywords and those sorts of things, but also using Facebook and LinkedIn as well. So we look at what is that awareness stage. Now the second piece is the opt-in offer. Now if we go back to what I've talked about already as far as what is the story and how do we insert ourselves into their story, and also what is their personality type, what we know with an I personality type is they need some structure and to be able to take that big vision and put it into a plan. So for me, one of my opt-ins is a 12-month marketing plan. It helps them bring all their ideas into something that they can see visually and they can uh, give them, pace themselves, I guess, with all the ideas that they have, but also to have an actionable plan that they can then implement. So that's where, for me, that's what the opt-in that makes the most amount of sense because I can insert myself into their problem, which is I've got lots of great ideas. I don't know how to market these things and get them out there. So that's where my opt-in offer comes in. The next part of it, which as I said, we'll talk about, uh, so opt-in offers I'm going to talk about more next week. But the next part is then what's the nurturing sequence. And that's our um, week three where we go into the access system. So you'll learn about how to do um, nurturing email sequences and invite them. So during my access sequence for the 12 month uh, marketing um, plan, it's really about giving them the tools and the resources to allow them to understand that they can do this and giving them other um, key pieces or key resources that will support that plan that they're creating. So that's where that comes from. And of course, as I said, the offer for me then is into the online marketing mastermind, uh, which is about providing the accountability for them and giving them a deeper level um, of support and training as far as that marketing side. And then the final piece in your structure or in your framework is going to be inviting them to actually work with you. So that tends to be the sales page. And that sales page, again, needs to keep talking about the story that they're most interested in, which is, um, for, for mine at least, is how do I get this thing done? So for you, I'd love for you to think about, at the moment, with any um, frameworks that you already have set up or sequences, um, story sequences, what is it that you already um, have set up in your business? Are you actually inserting yourself into their problem and um, their solution or the outcome that they most want? Or have you created something that you're, um, at the moment, felt was a great idea at the time, but doesn't really connect with someone's story? Are you inserting yourself into their story? So if you have any questions, as I said, pop them in the chat. More than happy to answer those. Um, but hopefully you can see that today, starting with the story, what is their story is really important. Understanding their personality so that you um, can see what they're big, so that you have another layer when it comes to understanding where they're at and the solution that they most need for their top, for their personality type. And then you need to create that system at the end. And the beauty of that system is that it's repeatable, that you get to um, create um, something that people can continue to go through, but it also creates consistent outcomes for your business as well, which is really important. 
So thanks again for watching. Next week I'm going to go through how to make a great first impression um, through what we're delivering to them. And of course, um, how do we get that welcome email? That's one of the things we're going to really focus on. What, does it, what needs to go in that that's going to allow them to want to keep being part of your community and um, loving the content that you're putting out. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next Friday. Thanks.